Hello and welcome back to learning more about how the environment works on your skin, hair or body goals to change how these behave. Now we said that we are going to discuss about the skin aging exposome which is basically a sum total of all the factors in your environment that act on your genetics to make changes in the way the skin behaves, right? Now, uh, to start with understanding the skin aging exposome, we need to start with the genome. Now, the Human Genome Project was an ambitious project, it was a multi-country collaborative project which tried to lay open all the parts of a human genetic code to be able to understand which disease was being sent out by which chromosome in which gene. So the idea was that most diseases, yes, they do have a genetic background. The idea was that let's understand the genes and then we will have understood the disease. This went on till about early 2003 where they completely laid open the human genetic code. Now did this solve all the problems? It would have except for the fact that we do not demonstrate all of the characteristics that are coded for by our genome or our genetic code. Even as we spoke about the genome and the exposome, I'm going to be introducing you to a couple of other ohms before the end of this episode and we look at many more in the series to come. Now before that, let's break for a kuti story. Now once upon a time in a deep dark dense jungle, there lived a family of four parrots, amma bird, upper bird and two baby birds. Now one day when the parents were out hunting for food, a hunter came and took away the baby birds. And uh, as he was taking them home towards his house, the, one of the birds escaped and flew away and the other bird ended up being his pet for his children in his household. The bird that escaped flew away and found another house. Here lived a person, let's call him the kind forest guide. Here lived a person who would actually help travellers who had lost their way, find their way in the forest. He would receive them, help them with refreshments and then send them on their way, in the, with, give them directions and send them on their way. So the two baby brother birds went to two different households. So years passed and one day a weary traveller having lost his way finds, him at the do finds himself at the doorstep of this hunter's household. So even before he could put his foot in, he hears a loud shriek of a bird and which says, get away from here, hold him down, skin him alive, cut him up, chop him into pieces and so on. And terrified he just runs away from there and then he goes on and eventually finds the house of the forest guide. Immediately he hears a voice like, please come in, take some rest, I'll help you with the way forward. So what he, he looks up and he says this bird speaking to him like this and he asks the bird, what's up? I just came from your, from another uh, home where there was a similar looking bird but which was much more angry and shrieked at me and here I find you being all kind and nice and asking me to come into the house. What's going on? So the, the bird explains, uh, he says, you must have met my brother who ended up in a different household. We were separated in, uh, in childhood and we ended up and grew up in different households. What you hear as the language of my brother, the words of my brother or what he's picked up from the language of the people he stays with. And when you hear the kindness and the welcoming and the welcome in my words, it's from the pe person I've been living with. So basically we pick up the language of the people that we stay with. So a lot depends on the company we keep. So very similar to this, depending upon what company your skin keeps, there can be a complete difference in terms of how your skin's aging happens. So here's the point, we were talking about birds of the same feather, rather the same nest, must be having identical genetic features. However, depending upon the environment they are exposed to, the outcomes can be completely different. So does this mean that there is something that is almost as important as the genome? enter the hero of this whole series, the exposome. So the term exposome was first introduced in 2005, right after the Human Genome Project by uh, a molecular epidemiologist, Christopher Paul Wilde, almost as a contrary point to the idea of genes being everything. So he was the first one to question, or at least in this terminology as exposome, the first one to put forth the idea that there's something that is actually as important as the genome, the exposome which has a pretty big regulatory role. Now, we could say that there are two individuals in the same family, same genome, same genetics, everything. Yeah? 
but let's say one of them has been chronically exposed to under under nutrition malnourishment right from a very small age they say from the age of uh, being an infant and then the other person gets all the right nutrients comparing these two individuals even if they be twins there is a very big possibility that the person who was undernourished ends up not reaching the maximum height as would have otherwise dictated by his genetics so even with everything equal nutrition played a role nutrition is part of the environment so that's an exposome that played a role and prevented the genetics from expressing the full height and if you think about it it's not even like a temporary impact height of a person is pretty much a permanent affair so that is the size of what the exposome can do to suppress or exaggerate a genetic feature so to draw a parallel in skin aging uh, in 2005 when we first talked about exposomes there was a chinese study that said that 80% of aging is probably genetic maybe 20% is ex external factors or environmental factors cut to almost a decade later i think somewhere around 2012 there was a Turkish study which said that 60% of aging is external factors like uh, smoking, like your BMI and sun exposure. Now cut to 2021, there's a new review which talks about saying that uh, close to 80% of aging is from external factors. So you can see that over time, the exploration of the environment as a key factor in causing aging has become bigger and bigger with passing time. Now, as we discussed, a lot depends upon what you give the skin and how you look after it. So now we've come to talk about the interactome where you have the genome which plays an impact on the exposome under the principle of what we could call as the epigenetics under one roof and this need not be only a, an external factor issue. Now I'll to add a layer to it it can also include the gut bacteria what we call as the gut microbiome. Similarly there's another set of microorganisms sitting on the skin and that again is an important factor in determining how the skin responds to certain uh, certain insults for example somebody with acne prone skin ha can have a very unhealthy microbiome which can exacerbate or exaggerate the occurrence of acne so all of these factors play together and we realize that as more and more factors are being introduced okay this influences the skin that influences the skin the role of genetics becomes smaller and smaller with time which gives us a lot of power to act on the factors that can actually be modulated so i leave you with the moral of the story which says that regardless of how you start out or regardless of what you've been given as genetics if you put your skin in good company it's bound to give you benefits i'll catch you with more information more detailed insights as to how the skin aging exposome actually plays out see you soon